It's time for another episode of Rainmaker for Contractors. Interviews and success stories with million dollar plus basement waterproofing and foundation repair owners. Discover how they market and grow their companies in today's economy. Hear directly from the most successful leaders in your industry. With your host and Rainmaker for Contractors owner, Bill Crawford. Hey, what's up? Welcome everybody to the Rainmaker for Contractors podcast. Today, we have Keith Martin from Sure Dry out in Virginia. Welcome, Keith, to joining the podcast. How are you doing today? Doing good, Bill. Thanks for asking us. Awesome. Great. So glad you're here today. Keith, can you tell us a little bit about your business, maybe what services you offer, how long you've been in business, and so on? Sure. Um, we started, or I started the company in January of 2002. Um, we have... Uh, uh, the regular gamut of services for waterproofing with a few, a few extras. Uh, we perform interior systems with sump pumps. Uh, we also exterior, we, we'll excavate a foundation and uh, waterproof from the outside, put all new drainage in. Um, we repair walls with structural steel or carbon fiber or, or grouting, grouting the cavities um, and up to and including uh, replacing foundations. Uh, we just did an, one of those a week ago. Um, in this area, we have uh, uh, some construction that prior to World War II was mixed in place concrete with uh, river uh, rocks and sand, and those are deteriorating really badly. And, mm, bad. um, we've got a system where we can sandwich those walls in place with poured concrete and uh, save save the structure that way nice offering a lot of different services did i see radon on your website as well yes uh, radon certified for uh, measurement and mitigation nice all right and what's you know what's a little bit more of your background like how'd you get into basement waterproofing um in 2000 a gentleman a local company approached me wanting to sell me his company and um uh, we kind of hashed that out for about six months. And I finally decided, you know what? This isn't going to work. Uh, he really wanted too much for it. and But I like the concept. So uh, I quit building houses at that point and uh, started a basement waterproofing company. Okay. And engineering background as well? Yes, I'm a mechanical engineering, uh, associates of applied science in mechanical engineering. Um, a lot of background in structure. Um, I know how to, I know how to, and soils, I know how to make a standard proctor and our bearing surfaces and all that. Huge background. I, house builder too, right? Back in the ha, day? Ha, house builder, uh, commercial, um, built restaurants, um, light commercial, um, heavy equipment operator, but done a lot of things. So you're bringing quite the skill set to, to a job site. You know, I like to think so. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. So you've been in business a long time. You know, that, that line that we've heard that 90% of new businesses go under within the first five years, you know, you've been around over 20 years. Uh, any, you know, why have you been successful? Why, why you, why do your, why are your doors still open? We're different than most. Um, there's a, there's a few guys around a couple, couple guys that try. Um, we, analyze the problem and create a solution for your problem instead of making our system fit your house. Um, a lot of times we're very efficient compared to uh, a canned um, system, uh, like, a, like a, an interior system. Um, sometimes they're not necessary or the whole perimeter is not necessary depending on how you analyze the problem. Um, so we're very honest with our customers. We give them choices and uh, already had a good reputation in town as a builder. So uh, that didn't hurt at all. Nice. Excellent. So you really customize the solution to what's going on. We try. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice job. So, you know, I, I spent 15 years owning my waterproofing company and anyone who's owned a company that long, you know, stuff happens, right? It, it you and I were just it, talking, it could happen. Uh, it could happen weekly. I mean, you come yes. in sometimes and you're putting fires out. What's something that is big that happened that at the time you're like, oh my gosh, this is just a catastrophe. But then looking back, you know, you didn't want that 
situation to happen again. So you fixed your systems, fixed your company, fixed your employees, whatever. And now you're a better company because of it. Does anything come to mind? Uh, yeah. Um, as you know, you, you've got to go through about 10 employees to find one. Um, we, the longevity, longevity of the company is I have employees that have been with me for 19 years. Um, with that, <clears throat> probably the, the biggest scare that I've had was we were repairing a water treatment plant. And I, I got in over my head a little bit on that one. And, uh, I lost some sleep getting it all figured out, but it all turned out well. Uh, <clears throat> it was a big contract and uh, it, it, it didn't go south, but it was headed that direction. So you fixed it and what's different about you today? Just wiser, smarter? Yeah, I gained a lot of knowledge. I had to pull. I had to pull in uh, some some knowledge from the Midwest in uh, from the urethane industry, and uh, it, it once those pieces clicked, uh, I'll do any of those jobs again as a general contractor. Nice, nice. I um, a quick side story. I'm real involved with the Basement Health Association. One of the advantages of having a network throughout the country is sometimes you. Just like what you said, you run into unique situations. You can call someone that maybe deals with this kind of a thing constantly. Like I ran into this, an iron ore situation and it's not real common in the Chicago market. And I called a contact out in, in on the East Coast. They answered, they gave me a 10 minute solution. I fixed it and going forward, whenever we ran into that situation, our contracts were different. Customers are happier, we're happier. Beautiful thing. Yes, my contracts have have evolved over the twenty years. They've they've you 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 learn you learn the pitfalls. Absolutely, the hard way sometimes, unfortunately. Yes, yes. And, you know, usually you take it on the chin, and you got to do what's right, and you don't, you know, you got to guard your reputation, and and but you learn, right? So, you know, in the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned quite a few different uh services that you offer is there anything you know like what what would you say is the most recent service that you are now offering um yeah um on a regular basis is radon um we are we are radon certified for measurement and mitigation and when it's done correctly and and that is the key um radon system combined with an interior pressure relief system not only makes the radon system work better it makes the the interior pressure relief system work better because it's a big dehumidifier um, but it has to be done correctly with your floor edging and uh, you're sealing everything up so that so that you can still honor your waterproofing warranty but at the same time your mitigation works correctly beautiful sounds like the right way to fix things ballparkish what what percentage of the jobs are you tying in a radon system into the basement waterproofing it's relatively new so um it's only about 15 well and the house has to have radon um i have i have put several radon systems in and called them dehumidifiers for the customer um which takes some of the uh, cost away we don't have to go above the roof with a stack and and some other issues that you have to do for radon um it works well and and sometimes people want that um so we give it as an option but if we if i get someone to to test the radon i'll give them a kit to uh, when i'm there and five or six days they'll have the result if they have radon they will typically uh, say yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, radon's pretty dangerous. I mean, it doesn't take much to, you could share some really powerful facts. That's yes. It's that. a class one carcinogen. Yeah. I, I've heard some crazy things like um, the political efforts to get money raised for radon is so minimal compared to say, these some of these other cancer causing situations because people die so quickly there's not really many people around with this situation so uh, scary stuff hey um kind of a curveball question but i'm curious of this what do you love about 
owning your your company and serving your clients or doing what you do what what makes you what gives you a great feeling and what really helps you come alive in your job i love solving problems the, it can be an engineering problem it can be a water drainage problem but i love solving problems that other people don't see um a lot of times um for instance um someone will get a quote, they'll have a little settling on their house, uh, get a quote, and uh, someone has quoted 10 peers. Uh, and really, they should be in a watching mode. We will reroute a downspout for them and make sure their gutter's clean and give them a crack indicator and see if this house stops moving once you took the water away. Mm. Uh, very simple solution, very inexpensive and it gives a means of monitoring the situation. If it continues to move, then that's a peering situation. But most of the time, the, the movement will stop. Nice. I know what it like. I know what it's like to solve problems for people. Very rewarding. It's awesome. And then you see them on the street. You don't have to run to the other side of the street and act like you don't see them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. See people all the time say that, that, that I may have forgotten their face, and, but they remember me. Yeah, I bet they do. I bet they do. That's awesome. Um, let's see. So if someone were in the waterproofing business, uh, you picked up quite a few other services. What other services would you recommend that just uh, if, you know, if I only did waterproofing, would you say, hey, well, definitely consider carbon fiber or definitely consider radon as well, or definitely consider foundation repair? Start with the basics. Um Water management above ground is pennies on the dollar once it gets in the ground. So, so help people with their, with their roof loads and their surface loads first. Um, the interior systems uh, and, pay, and get paid for it. I mean, it, it, it's a valuable service when it's done right. Sure. Um, once, once that's accomplished or do it in conjunction with a remediation inside, a lot of times, if it's a real estate transfer, you don't have the options um, to do to do the corrective first. You have to you have to honor the deal that's going on. Um, carbon fiber is is pretty easy. It's a pretty good. It's not a big learning curve. Um, structural steel, uh, soldier beams, uh, learn to do those correctly. Um, there's a lot of those that are not done right. And it's not hard. Um, and are you glad you got into radon? I am. I am. I. Uh, it's a. I'm in my cabin now. I'm. I'm. I'm in the George Washington National Forest. I came out here to work a couple of days. Um, uh, this is a good example. This, I bought this a couple of years ago, and the measured it, and it was 13 picocuries, and. Uh, I encapsulated it and put a radon uh, mitigation system in. And I'm looking at my monitor now. It's uh, 0.48 picocuries. I love doing that for people. Nice. So what's what's good and what's bad for picocuries? Okay. Um, there's two levels. Um, the EPA uh, action point is 4.0. So if it's a real estate transfer, four picocuries or more, requires remediation. The World Health Organization says 2.7 is a safe level. Um, when we remediate, we try to absolutely get under two picocuries. Um, radon is not a constant. It varies day, uh, with diurnal cycles, with rainfall. Um, in areas such as uh, Roanoke, where there's a lot of limestone caverns, it will even vary with the tide charts because right. the the caverns fill with water and blow the radon up through the houses. Crazy. So you you have a cabin and it was at 13 and now it's less than like half a percent. Yeah, it's it's, it's 0.48 right now. That's awesome. That's great. Very cool. Hey, last question for you. If someone were getting into the basement waterproofing business, what kind of advice would you give them? I think core values come to mind, reputation stuff how to treat customers, how to treat employees, what comes to mind? Remember that the first thing I would tell anyone getting, actually starting any business, but especially uh, uh, basement waterproofing is that 
12 hours is half a day. So be prepared to work half days, uh, particularly in the first two or three years. And your reputation matters. Um, you want your customers to, to feel good when, when they meet you and feel ecstatic when the work's done. And if there's a problem, immediately fix it. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. And you have to go back. There's a detail left undone. Um, something, it, it just happens. Sure. So, so um, when we have flooding conditions, actually uh, for my company, uh, we go into uh, a rescue mode. Uh, I pull all my guys into the shop. We outfit with, pump, with pumps and air, trucks with everything just to wait on calls for emergencies. And it could be something that we did or something to do, but we want to be able to handle that. Beautiful. Totally agree with you. That's awesome. Hey, hey say, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your words of wisdom. Really helpful. You've been listening to the Rainmaker for Contractors podcast, where basement waterproofing and foundation repair business owners and industry experts share marketing and sales information that helps you reach more customers. Please leave us a review on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform and get all of our show notes at rainmakerforcontractors.com slash podcast.